Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. It's Saturday as I'm recording this, so spent a little time listening to worship music and uh, reading the Word and asking the Lord, you know, what is a word for us today? And uh, we're just, many people are going through persecution right now. And uh, there in my prayers, I don't get all the information and I don't have time to check all the information unless that's going to become my full focus. So, but what I do here, you know, we've had uh, missionaries held for ransom in Haiti, <coughs> family with small children. Um, someone was reporting, I think it was Marley's Inspiration, reporting to pray for people that had been in prison, were let out, and then they came and got them again and put them back in prison, seemingly for no reason, just being persecuted for faith in Jesus Christ. So we are in those times, and there are people around the world that um, because of decisions they're making, they're just having to leave their jobs. Not all of them may be Christians, but uh, they have a conviction in their heart about things that they don't want to go along with. And we are just having more big government, uh, you know, <clears throat> wanting things done a certain way. And we know the end times that we're in, that that it's all in the Bible. These things will happen. But uh, we do need to pray for those Christian and non-Christian that are walking away from jobs that they've probably, uh, it's been their career. They've been doing a good job at their job. And, uh, you know, that leaves a blank space for a lot of people. It hurts everyone. And uh, we can't ask people to go against their conviction, so can we? Because we're trying to hold to ours. So uh, we're in a time where we must stand strong. And, uh, you know, you choose the world or you choose God. We are down to that time. And uh, when we choose God, we may have to let go of a lot of comforts. And a lot of people won't understand this. But it is my prayer that we stand strong for the Lord Jesus Christ. We owe him everything. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we've been talking about this persecution in my last upload. That took around a week to upload. <laughs> Stephen was uh, being stoned, and we saw how he handled his persecution. You know, in his defense, he preached Jesus Christ. And um, when he was being stoned, he asked the Lord to forgive them. And so he's definitely following in the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And we have to follow that same pattern with every situation in our life when uh, people come against us. Father, forgive them. We're not fighting flesh and blood, but we are fighting principalities and powers of darkness. Chapter 8 of Acts. <clears throat> this is talking about the conversion of Simon the sorcerer. So, you know, in our world today, people have dabbled with so much. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, I was raised pretty simple on a farm, but Satan still managed to circulate things by me uh, in the occult and, um, you know, just witnessing some things demonically and um, lustful, sensual things, all the temptations, doesn't really matter how isolated you might have been, uh, Satan knows how to visit you and try to destroy your soul. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And um, right now there is such a dividing 
you know, we can see uh, more clearly who is really for Jesus and who isn't. And uh, we can see why Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. We can't be lukewarm. We've got to be on fire and passionate the way that Stephen was. And we've got to pray and ask the Lord to help us to be courageous and strong, to help those that are under heavy persecution now, that their faith will not fail them. Chapter 8, and Saul, so this would be the Apostle Paul later, but right now he's still Saul persecuting the church. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So, you know, Stephen and Philip were the ones ordained to tend to the widows that they went around full of the Holy Ghost doing many miracles and ministering to the people. So now here goes Philip evangelizing as persecution increases and they are scattered out of Jerusalem. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. So he was um, by another spirit doing things to bewitch the people. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So, you know, when the gospel is preached, there uh, are some things to obey. We're, we're asked to believe in Jesus to repent of our sins and uh, to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins, and then we will, shall, receive the Holy Ghost. 13. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. And, you know, right now the Lord's delivering people that have been involved in witchcraft and Satanism and nothing's too hard for God. Those people were bewitched. They got fascinated with something in the occult and uh, they got bound up. But God can break the bounds of those sins. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So notice Peter and John are quick to go to these new believers to pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost because they know very well the difference that baptism made in their lives, the boldness that came with it. Verse 16, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. 
So, you know, God ordained by the laying on of hands for um, things to be imparted. The Holy Ghost. People will lay hands on people and pray for them to heal them. And um, this is important to know that that is ordained of the Lord. Verse 18, And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So Simon's come out of having a pretty powerful position bewitching these people, but he's believed in Jesus, and uh, he still likes that power thing, and he sees that people are receiving the Holy Ghost, and he's wanting to pay the apostles. Let, I, I want that power too so I can give them the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Verse 19, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. And you know, people that are uh, preaching for the Lord, delivering people, prophesying in the Lord's name, need to be very, very careful uh, they need to repent if they've tried to charge money for things because uh, we can see here, Peter didn't like that. Thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. We don't need to make an offering to get deliverance or make an offering to get a prophetic word. Uh, we don't buy the gifts of God. Verse 21, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. So, you know, Simon has an honest heart here before the Lord he realizes oh I just got in trouble with God I don't think he was trying to he just uh, he wanted to be one that would be able to give the Holy Ghost to people as well but he offered money for it so he had a quick chastisement and a quick repentance pray, pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me and they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So now the word is being preached to more than just the Jewish people. The Samaritans are receiving the word of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. So what we would term Isaiah. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. So notice that New Testament believers, evangelists, they're hearing directly from the Lord. Philip has been told by the Spirit to go to Samaria. He's told to go join himself now to this eunuch in a chariot because the Lord is spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 30, And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch is reading a, uh, 
prophetic word about Jesus Christ, and this is where Philip begins to teach him about Jesus. Verse 34, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So why is the eunuch wanting to be baptized? Because as Philip preaches Jesus to him, part of the gospel is to be baptized in Jesus' name. So that's been preached to him. He's believed what he's heard about Jesus. He wants to be baptized. So this is just an honest re response of a heart that is turned to the Lord. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. I really love that. Jesus, um, Philip's through with his job there with the <laughs> eunuch, and uh, he's needed at Azotus now, so the Lord doesn't make him walk there. The Lord translates him in the spirit to his next preaching assignment. Well, we're in Book of Acts time again here. We probably never left it, but we're in a, a mighty, mighty end time supernatural work of the Lord. Supernatural where it feels natural if you're getting close to the Lord and open to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. It should just flow. It should feel natural. I remember the Lord speaking to me the first time in a voice I would say was audible. It felt like a regular conversation. And I wasn't shocked by it. It just seemed natural. And uh, we just need to feel natural with the Lord. He's going to speak to our hearts. He's going to minister to us. If we want to be a part of revival, saving souls, He's going to send us forth. He's going to make opportunities for us to witness to other people. And we just need to keep our hearts close to Him, our minds on Him, in the Word, letting ourselves be transformed by the renewing of our mind in the Word and staying full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost so we can minister. Full of the Holy Ghost so when Jesus steps out on that cloud and calls for his children, we are ready. We are ready. He calls for his bride. Come home. Praise God. I know many people feel very ready, but we're just working with the Lord in his timing. And uh, his timing is perfect. I just love the Lord. I am so grateful that he's with me every day. I go uh, through some ups and downs like everybody else does. Have distressing things that come and go. You know, the distressing things don't stay forever. We can know that uh, the Lord delivers the righteous out of all of their afflictions. So if you're in a time of affliction, draw close to the Lord, and he will deliver you. We are praying for deliverance for souls. There is tyranny by governments in this world, and we're praying. You should be praying for your nation, for your leaders, for the Christians everywhere. They need to be strong, and they need to be very much prayed up. Well, I love you. Jesus loves you more. Acts 2.38, if you need to give your heart to the Lord, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed.